Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, huh? So I've taken to sitting on the sofa and creating my journal pages, but that means I've not been filming them. So sit down and I'll recreate how I did my Aladdin theme cover page and I'll walk you through. So to write out June, I'm gonna be using the spacing four by four. So each one of my letters is gonna be four dots high by four dots wide. I'm very much following a brush lettering-esque style. So all of my downstrokes are gonna be one dot space wide and then all of the connectives and the upstrokes are gonna be a half a dot space. And that's what's leading me through writing out June. I'm really trying to use that dot grid to guide and to make sure that my spacing and that each letter looks quite uniform. I know there's styles that don't follow everything being on the same line and they are beautiful my brain just can't work like that so because I'm a stickler for the regiment I'm going to keep it all on one line and I'm going to make my J just that little bit bigger so it fits in and looks like a title for the page I'm now going to go in and try and fill out some of that white space so I'm just going to add quite a few different boxes in I'm not going to have one big doodle I thought it'd be quite cool because I'm going to do some quite intricate Aladdin-esque doodles that actually if I kept the boxes quite small, then I only have to do small little doodles. For outlining, I'm using the 0.3 width uni pen. I'm getting on quite well with this one. I do like my Faber Castles, but I find this uni pen bleeds a little bit less. So I'm gonna outline June and outline all of the boxes. I absolutely dread outlining boxes because I have a fear of overshooting lines, um, which I think having a clear ruler helps because you can see underneath your pencil markings and it hasn't happened on this page. So I'm gonna take that for the win. So the reason I chose little boxes, I don't know, you can't really see on my phone, but there is a picture of Abu the monkey from Aladdin and I'm using the ruler to look at horizontal lines. So for Abu, his two eyes, they're not um, pa parallel, horizontal. They're not horizontal with each other. His right eye is higher than his left eye. And I think perspective wise, that makes the biggest difference to your doodles if you can get um, all that perspective in. I always start with the eyes. I will say it time and time again to you guys. Don't draw the outline of any character or face first because then you're forced to squidge and fit everything in that outline. And inevitably it, it, it just, you, it probably could work for some people, but it's never worked for me. So I start with the eyes and then I build up from the mouth and I'm constantly looking back at that picture and seeing, you know, is the tip of his nose, is that underneath his pupil or is that underneath the outside of his eye? And just trying to get them to line up. So each little bit that I'm drawing, I'm looking back at the picture. For example, the genie's nose, the tip of his nose goes right to the edge of his right eye. Um, but then that nose comes right down um, into the bottom of his teeth. So I have to make it a little bit longer. It's a very difficult nose to draw. If you've ever drawn the genie and you've had to draw his nose, you have my deepest sympathy. And that's why I'm going to put these doodles into boxes. So by keeping the space contained, I've only got that box to doodle in. I can then go in, add in my doodle, and as soon as I've hit the edge of that box, that doodle is done. Um, I do like some freehand doodles where you've got a large space and you can really doodle anything you want, but it can be a big thing and a big intimidating thing to, to doodle. So I think by putting things in boxes, it means, I mean, it means I can, on this spread, for example, I can have the magic carpet, the lamp, Abu the monkey and the, uh, the genie, but I don't have to draw their entire bodies. I don't have to have them like posed next to each other. It's just a lot of effort. And let's face it, I'm not going to spend hours and hours on a June cover page. So by putting them in a little box, then I can have three or four different doodles and they're all contained within that box. And I'm only going to put the doodles in these four boxes. The other boxes that I've drawn, they're just going to be some block colour. There's loads of different colours and rich colours that are in Aladdin. Um, I also want to get a bit of teal for, for Jasmine in there, but I don't want to be doodling in every single box. I'm going to leave a few and just have them as big bulk filled colour. And because there's lots of different shades that I want to use for this spread, I am going to use more than one type of pen. So I've got my Faber Castle red line markers that I'm using. I've also got some Crayola Super Tips that I'm going to put in there. I'm also using the Faber Castle brush artist pens because I've got a pack of blue shades, so I'll use them. And I've got some Bic Color Kids pens. You'll notice a theme, they're all kids pens other than, I think the Faber Castle and Tombow are the most grown up felt tip pens I use. And still, I can't help myself but use the kids ones. <laughs> <laughs> but the colouring in part has to be the best part of any spread. 
there's a certain amount of anxiety when you're drawing out um, a character or an image because you're trying to do your best and you want it to look good. The moment you put that black outliner and it is outlined, whether it looks good or not, it is done. It's set on the page. So when it comes to colouring in, oh, that's the nice bit. That's the mindful bit. That's the bit where you can just get lost in your own thoughts and start colouring and not care about anything in the world because you're colouring like a seven-year-old and you're loving it. So I've coloured in the character boxes first because they all have preset colours but it means once I've done them I can then look at what colours I still want to use, still want to add into the spread. I've got the teal for jasmine and a couple of other pinks and blues and purples and then it's just on to June. Now June I am using the Bic Colour Kids because I find these nibs really squashy. I hope you know what I mean by that but they're brilliant they put down a lot of ink without bleeding through they're just soft and light to draw with so I've gone in with a lighter orange and then I'm going to go back in with a bit of a darker orange and put that going from the bottom upwards just to give it a bit of a a bit of an effect a bit of a gradient and I just think the orange against all of the purples blues and, and stuff in the background it just helps it to stand out much more so that's it for my June cover page. Well, in fact, that's my second June cover page because this is the one that I've actually got in my journal. So I do have a spare. So I'm thinking I'm going to take this page out and I'm going to pop it in an envelope and I'm going to send it to somebody who would like it. If that's you, then let me know down in the comments that you'd really like to receive this journal page. Um, let me know, make sure you subscribe to me and that you follow me on Instagram because I'm probably going to message you over there. It seems a lot easier to direct message people on Instagram. But let me know down in the comments if that's you and what your Instagram handle is so that I can go and message you over there and I will just pick somebody and send it out to you. Have a great one, guys. I'll see you soon.